Hello again, I'm Extra Shoddy, and sadly I'm staying that way. This is a follow-up to my previous video, an audio-visual guide to Hazy Flame. Ideally, we would have some ranked footage, but sadly, this is what my ranked climb looks like. Thanks, OBS. Instead, we'll use footage from Stage 2 of the November 2022 KC Cup. I hope for your sake you still like losing to Mech Knights. But first, a word from our sponsors. Our first match is up against Mech Knights. They have a searchable monster negate, and that's real bad for us. So most of the ones during the KC Cup were kind of oscillating between middle-aged mechs and Surprise Present. And as it turns out, Surprise Present is seems like it's the better build, especially when you're running into a lot of mirror matches, because it's much worse to flop useless cards on your side of the field than it is to clog your opponents with them. And who knew? And the um, ceiling you get from stuff like Assault Mode Activate and... Um, and the Cyanet cards, and I guess a small Synchro Engine if you're using the Assault Mode stuff. That ends up being really helpful. In addition to that, it makes Blue Sky live on turn 1, which ends up being important if you want to go into the Link 2. As if you can search with uh, Blue Sky, you can search uh, Avram from the deck, Normal Summon him, and go straight into the uh, Mech Knight Link 2, Morning Star. You can also do this with the uh, Quick Play, as you've just seen here. They're going heavy into this stuff. But, as it turns out, that usually um, ends up with you ending your play as soon as you make the Link 2. Since you can't really extend beyond that, or go into a rank 8. Uh, specifically, the uh, Photon Dragon, um, pop a card, make another, pop another kind of deal. That ends up being really bad for um, any deck that wants to use Beatrice, like ours, because they can just steal Beatrice, and now that it's uh, named Galaxy Eyes Cypher Dragon, it can get ranked up into, a, I think, Full Omer Photon Dragon, and then the other Cypher Dragon. The player here does a big stinky, because, the turn, because I can just attack, he clogs up his own board, so he can't move around his monsters, which means I can attack the, one, the Mech Knight in the, directly in front of... Mars, and then I just slam into um, Rescue Rabbit for game. Cool beans. Now we're up against another Prowler. This time it's a Mech Salad. This um, variation is good for reason, the same reasons the other ones are, although it really suffers because you need every extra deck slot when you're playing um, Salomon Greats, and you need at least a couple when you're running Mech Knights. And while that does make your um, Salad plays have a technical higher ceiling, there ends up being enough um, xenophobic cards with uh, Mech Knights, specifically the uh, Quick Play spell, that you never end up really benefiting, and you need to end your board with a um, Salmon Great uh, Link Monster if you want to make use of the Counter Trap. So you're not really getting the most out of both engines if you're trying to go hard into one or the other. They're starting out with Lady Debug and Gazelle, and since we know that they can go into um, some of their bigger stuff, there's no real point in, um, what's it called? Trying to um, uh, banish their monster with Farfa just yet, because we don't know the full extent of their um, seal. So they go straight into um, a bunch of Mech Knights, and from there they can go into Morning Star, get at least one of the um, counter countering trap cards in their deck. I think that's what they go for here. So let's see. Morning Star, and get Secret to the hand. Yep, we really can't use monster effects this game. Or at least, not after this turn. So instead of actually banishing their monster, we're going to banish our own, because they can't run over Beatrice, so there's no point in really going for anything but um, this. And, they've, uh, and we've lost pretty much any chance of using monster effects while they're occupying every zone. So we're just going to go for a straightforward beatdown play. Mars isn't in a zone, so they can't negate it. At least not with this kind of stuff. And this is a little weird. They decide to um, 
pop their own stuff to free up some zones. And that's good in the long term, but they could have afforded to just leave their stuff around while they set up mech knights and went from there. Because as it is, they really just kind of have to um, play new stuff to get anything else live. We can't really activate any effects because A, um, Beatrice doesn't have any material, and B, full zones with um, mech knights. But this is, I think, where they kind of screw up, because they leave a monster in the central zone where they can't move anything into there. They don't have any traps to do so, but even if they had, say, the quick play spell, because they left Gazelle in um, the central zone, I can activate whatever I want is there. It's just a question of managing my zones as far as I need to. So I get to go into the um, Exabital Rhinocephus combo with Farfa, and I can clear up most of their board. If they had the counter trap, I wouldn't be so quick to banish the um, central monster. But because they don't have anything else on board, I'm totally fine with it. So we can punch everything and we'll have enough damage per game. If they had more or I wasn't able to do it, I would have activated um, Rhino's effect first. So they couldn't summon anything into that zone after the fact. All right, we have to another Crowler. You can guess what that means. That's right, it's Metal Foes. It works, um, Crowler worked for the, uh, Metal Foes the same way it worked that, uh, Light Barrier works for them, in the sense that it gives you a free card that only spawns during your turn. So there's no chance of it getting, um, sniped by a MST or, um, slower back row removal on your own turn. Like, let's say you had a, um, the, uh, level 3, um, Salmon Great. I think it's... Uh, which is? I don't remember which it is. The, um, Foxy. Yeah. Foxy could get rid of it with its graveyard effect before you got to do anything if it had spawned on turn one, which one of the Masters of Bright skills does. Anywho, not to the point. They're going straight for Full Metal Foes and, um, an Alkahest, which means there's, they have access to two Alkahest on their turn. And, um, there... There was the only option they really had to interrupt my play and end my turn if they had uh, snatched up um, Red Layer on the spot. They didn't do that, so I get the option of just punching. So they can keep themselves alive with a uh, Mithrilium, because now I have to attack into it. And then I can attack over that, and then I attack that. So now he has much less life, but I can't use Beatdown again. And he has enough um, resources to um, clear at least two of my monsters, which is totally fine. So he's going to go for a Pendulum Summon, and I want to say um, Orcalc, the um, level 8 with double piercing. Oh, no, he goes for Mithrilium first. He can't bounce any of my monsters because uh, Hazies are non-targeting, but he is going to be able to uh, recycle full Metal Foes Fusion and hopefully draw into that. But he goes for another Metal Foes Fusion, so that gives him... Now goes into Orcalc. So with that, he'll have two monsters on board and punch two of my guys. It doesn't really matter what he goes for, and I choose not to search because I'm running out of hazy monsters in the main deck, and since I want Periton live, I need to go for that. And if I remember correctly, those two were my very last, so I couldn't really do any other play. So anyhow, I go for um, Beatrice, because really what matters is that I have an effect I can activate without that can get rid of Orcalc without destroying him. So I do that, and then just attack with uh, Sphinx for game. The last video discussed the deck list we used in the November 2022 season, but those cards are not the only ones I would consider viable. Hazy were designed in some part to act as generic fire support, and Beatrice gives you an entirely new pool of cards to choose from. Both of them grant tools that expand the Hazy game plan. Your pool of tech cards come from three main categories. A. Fire monsters. B. Monsters with generic effects for a little investment, like hand traps. And C. Cards that benefit from being sent to the graveyard by Beatrice. Hazy needs a high count of fire monsters to work well, so categories B and C tend to compete for two or three spaces in the deck list. Category A includes solid fire monsters like Arvada and Mescalinosaurus. What do you mean that's not right? I'm not- Fire Monsters Mesh 
match well with your main hazy plays, as they can be discarded to pay for Periton's effect and promptly revive the Sphinx's effect after she's summoned with Periton. These can modify your combo lines, giving you new ways to build or break the board. Category B includes cards like Archfiend Eccentric and the Fun Button. These cards deal with specific matchups, like Galaxy and Mech Knights. However, they don't interact with your combo lines, making them awkward outside of their specific use cases. Category C includes cards that benefit from being sent to the graveyard by Beatrice. These include Stego Cyber, who protects your face and gives extra Xyz material, like a Diet Paleo, or Weathering Soldier, who sets up a free fusion summon. Sadly, most don't mesh well with the Hazy strategy, and can easily brick if you draw them. Burning Abyss monsters are an exception to this, as their self-summoning effects let them act as tribute fodder for your Hazy monsters. <laughs> Next up we have Infernoids, and this one's with like uh, Mech Knights in the sense that they can get a easy monster negate on turn one, and they never really stop from there. Which again, really bad for Hazy Flame, which is all monsters, loses a normal summon, gets screwed up. So they do just that, they, um, hold on, that's right, they go for um, uh, Decatron, go for Deviati, which is the um, monster negate one and set two cards, at least one of which is probably Void Feast, I'm guessing? So you can't really do much from there. Anyhow, they go for another Decatron, go for the um, little guy, Armadic, that's what it is, and uh, pop my guy, make a Link monster. They go for Dual Little, the Chimera, the uh, Fire Link 2. Go back into Deviati, and then double up with Void Feast and Void Seer. So now they have a bunch of stuff, one of which can uh, banish my guy if for whatever reason I have stuff. And he does the attack order wrong, and also doesn't bother and doesn't negate the right monster, or tribute the right monster for the negate. So he doesn't kill me this turn, but I'm still pretty SOL. So I normal summon, I can't do anything from here, and I just lose. So it goes. And even if I had a big enough monster to attack over um, Decatron per game, he'd still have the option of banishing it with his other guy. So, no real options there. So, I lose that one. Next up is uh, Heroes. And they don't do so great. I'm just going to tell you that right off the bat. So, they're using uh, Weevil, just hopefully to use a more generic skill. And that's what it is. It's Life Point Boost Alpha. But um, they don't open so hot. They go for Rhoda, they set a monster, and if I remember correctly, maybe they set a card? Nope. And we have uh, Agony and Serb in hand, and so that makes things very simple. We go for a little bit of a complicated setup, and that's so that we have an out to, um, what's it called? Uh, Veil, in case he has it. Or rather, we have an out in case... We have an out or a disruption for the next turn in case he has a hand trap. So if we attack and we got Veil, we'd still be able to banish it and then attack with our other two guys for gain. That didn't happen, so it didn't matter. Hooray! We're up against Salomon Grades, but this guy is not very good. You'll see why in a couple minutes. Well, not even that. Less than a minute. So we go second, which is usually a death sentence if we're up against Salomon Grades. So... Standard skill, I don't think it's as strong as Salomon Great lists that use ties, at least against Hazy Flame, just because they can't do a quick boost with two monsters and make um, their Link or Jaguar um, big enough to run over Sphinx. So they go into um, Bail Links with Falco, Summon Sanctuary, then they use Falco's effect and accomplish nothing. So now that's uh, set three. So we're going to go ahead and um, Summon Agony, uh, not destroy both our fire monsters because we want to be able to um, summon Periton no matter what happens. So if that got hit with Crackdown, we still have um, Periton live. Okay, last up is another Salomon Great player. This one isn't as bad as the other player, but I don't think he has the best card choices, at least from what I could tell. Let's see how I open in this one. I'm... Going first this game, which is nice. We actually have the ideal setup for um, Hazy Flame in this matchup. 
because we're able to um, open with uh, a pair tin and have um, Agni in hand. So we'll go into Beatrice. And normally this would be where we mill um, Mars, but we already had him in the graveyard, so we just mill something we don't want to draw, in this case, Link Slayer. And now, if he can't break through at least one of the monsters on the field, specifically um, Mars, we're guaranteed to have enough materials for a uh, summon of Agni and a Banish from him. So that means that a first, at least the first part of our play is going to be uh, interrupted. He's playing the uh, Equip Spell for um, Salomon Greats, which is interesting. So he excavates that. I think, I don't know if um, Falco would have done anything for him in this particular juncture, but it was an option available to him. So it goes for Gazelle and um, Baelinx. So uh, he has enough to um, kind of continue from here. And, if, and he doesn't, he does send the um, counter trap and he goes into uh, Heat Leo, not Heat Leo, the um, Sunlight Wolf, which is pretty standard. Um, I don't know how he's getting another monster on the four. Oh, there we go. Foul. Does that. Gets Gazelle back to hand. And um, depending on what he does, we should be able to um, prevent him from using the uh, uh, double link summon effect of um, Sunlight Wolf. So I'm getting back um, the counter trap. He can use a counter trap effect on its own to bring it back. But instead he goes into Heat Leo. But now that he's activated Sanctuary, he's committed all his stuff to the board, so we can go ahead and use Farfa and get rid of it. We could have waited until he did the um, Equip spell, usually after he did the um, Double Link Summon, but it's better to prevent him from even getting the chance to put the Counter Trap on board, because now we have an out and it's just game from there. He doesn't even stick around. And there you have it. How to play Hazy Flame against decks that no longer exist. I hope you've learned nothing and are more confused than when we started. Tune in next time when I forget how to read and die.